Co-working spaces in Africa are the logical answer to entrepreneurial cultures that list collaboration as one of their biggest objectives. Kenya is working to make itself one of Africa's financial hubs and Nairobi is the heart of its startup scene. There are a number of co-working places and growth hacking hubs as well as traditional venture capital funded incubators. A lot of young people today want to run their own businesses around the world. In Kenya's capital, Nairobi, with the millennial spirit in undergraduates burning to earn a living, the cost of rent for office space soaring and startups flourishing, companies are turning to virtual and co-working spaces as an alternative. Time sharing is definitely an idea whose time has come. I don't see it uh, going anywhere. It's, it's the offices, the traditional offices that I see. Uh, I see them on their deathbed. But as far as time, really you just use the office for when you need it. You pay for what you're using. It's like a meter. It's like a taxi. When, uh, when Uber came or such like things, Taxify or whatever, they put the traditional taxi people out of business and I don't see them coming back. According to Knight Frank's 2017 Global Property Index report, growing volume of capital is targeted at Sub-Saharan Africa real estate investment and development while rapid population growth and urbanization are key drivers of property market activity across sub-Saharan Africa. If it takes a whole village to raise a child, well, maybe it takes a co-working space to grow a business. And you can see why it's all appealing. I can have my coffee right here when I come in the morning in an environment that is cushioned to serve my needs. I can meet my PR agency right here and my graphic designer through a referral. And at the end of the day, I can meet my web designer by sitting right next to them. We've been here for quite some time. The reason we chose this space is because um, it saves us on cost, such as electricity, then internet, uh, furniture, the, all costs are inclusive. Um, there is coffee throughout the day. You have a receptionist that you don't have to pay for. Uh, you get access to the boardroom. They, it also provides us with a good platform to network because there are so many startup businesses. So you get to share ideas with other people. Co-working now boasts a range of users across different industries, a trend expected to accelerate as 2018 approaches with Kenyans like Faith Imani and her partners choosing to venture into the business itself. Something interesting about us is I have two partners, ladies. Uh, we have Daisy Nyaronge, who is our CSO, and we have Aida Goko, who is in operations. And we both met at our previous uh, employer, which was the same environment as the one we just started. The fact that we know what we are targeting and what we are in for makes us a bit unique. So in the next five or ten years, we see ourselves bringing in more entrepreneurs uh, from different arenas, not only now in Nairobi, but also in other dynamics in other countries. Guys who come here in Kenya and they're wondering, where can I work from? The burning question, however, is, are co-working spaces the solution businesses have been looking for? Or is it just an expanding bubble that is going to burst? I really don't, I don't see people abandoning that concept. It's a good concept. You just use what you need. Because of the digital technology the, which we are in, a lot of people now really don't go to the CBD for businesses. don't really see it. Uh, there will be copycats who will try and, and cash in, but a lot will be left on the wayside. One thing's for sure, the number of individuals wanting to manage their own businesses will continue to increase on the account of readily available tools that will streamline essential business activities. Robert Kodingo for Africa News.